one night on stage, you go, hey, I see you grabbing your love handles. I didn't even know I was doing it. Yeah, well, that was helpful. That told me a lot about you. That that like sort of like broke down a great wall between us. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm interested in your, because I don't like you are mm -hmm. open. You have a eating disorder, yeah, sort of. That I do. You, that you that's ongoing. Yeah. Have you gone to twelve step program? I know. Or? I have tried that, but it's you know I'm not. I you can't look like me and go to an eating disorder recovery thing. Like it's, it's just, just like, like it's like smoking weed and going to NA or something. No, it's just like you know most of the people in there have overeating issues, yeah. and you know I have or but I am mildly anorexic, meaning you will undereat. No, meaning that I have like bizarro food issues around gaining weight. You're against it totally. You have a scale. I do, but like I'm okay with this stuff now. Like I have been okay. I had to do a lot of work on it, but it is. Like if I get above a certain level of discomfort physically, like I really become totally diminished. And like, I, I feel like zero self-worth, zero confidence. If you're um, over 185-ish, 86-ish, you know, like I think, I mean, I got, I've gotten heavy, but like, I can't handle it. And I've, and I've spent a lot of time as I get older, just being like, dude, just enjoy yourself. You know, wh what do you care if you're, you're chubby? or whatever. And I'm, and I, and I, and I try to sit in that for a minute and I just can't do it. And now I'm vegan, like, you know, for the last few months, which I don't know if it's affecting my weight, but I feel better about what I'm eating. But that, that food stuff is so deep and it's so, uh, dug into me from your mom, right? Yeah. She, yeah. She had an eating disorder. She still, you know, she just, that was her life was, was, you know, maintaining a weight of like 119 or 116. So I was brought up, you know, as a chunky kid, as they say, you know, husky pants. And by this mother who was terrified, like I used to do a joke, that joke about, uh, like, I, I think that for the first nine years of my life, my mother just saw me as her fat. And that, <laughs> that if she just stopped eating, maybe I... I hope you didn't write it ahead of time. I hope you just I, thought I, of it on stage. I think I must I hope have. to God. Of course they did. But you didn't. Just I, you maybe didn't actually that's sit down. It, that's structured like a joke, but it's not a laugher, you know. Like it's it's just a sad piece of information in a way. It gets a, a jarring laugh. It doesn't no, quite that's make a laugh. sense. That's yeah. funny. I mean, that could get a laugh. Yeah, but like it's still it plagues me still. You know, it, like I think about food constantly and about what to eat, how to eat. You know, what I shouldn't eat, how much shame I have. It's 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 deeper than drugs, and it affects. Oh, that's my, interesting. Yeah. Well, I guess it's because you have it's you can't avoid it. It's the same kind of thing. You know, I think it all sprouts from that well that, you know, my mother felt so like insecure and weird that he, she made her entire life about, you know, managing her weight. You know, and she got down to, in, to below 100 at different times. She was definitely clinically, you know, fucked up with it when I was growing up. And, you know, it was uh, it, it affected everything. The two of them, the, 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 you know, the selfishness involved in both my parents, but that eating disorder really, really got me. Like, I remember I went away to college my freshman year and I, I got as skinny as I ever got. I was that, yeah, down in the one sixties and I looked terrible, but I was, I just wanted my mom to be proud. <laughs> was she? <laughs> nah, not really. She said I looked weird. There was no winning. You know, right. You know what I mean? It was always, there. there was, it was always a, a little stick. Yeah, my mom, but I think that's where I got the sense of humor too. It was always a little stick. I would think you think of yourself as a combination of your parents. Yeah, like uh, this one for sure. Like just it, it don't you? Yes, don't but I people? still try to think like, well, not that. Well, no, I think that you can have a little control over that. I can't. I do think that you can make choices in your life, you know, and also there's something you know proactive about isolating the bad things that you got from them and trying to sort of cognitively deal with those and, and embrace the things, you know, find the things that you got from them that are good. I think that's a great, you know, recovery thing. Uh, not necessarily recovery in the terms of 12 steps or anything, but in terms of psychological recovery to accept the parts of your parents that, you know, kind of made you who you are in a good way, you know, and then deal with the other ones in a different way. Like, you know, I can make different choices than to honor that monster your body yeah it's funny the amount of guys on here 
who all confess to body stuff. Yeah, yeah. Inco- I, me included, in terms of just like gripping. Marin caught me gripping my love handles on stage one time in a very <laughs> subtle way, and I was like, felt. But what is your body stuff? Well, I think you know. You I, look I, less fat than you've looked. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Yeah, but I think I'm always thank in you, a, Ozempic. <laughs> I well, I have a funny Ozempic story, but. I always am at a weight where people, I look like I just lost weight. That's very funny. That's, that's, that's my weight. And, and true. <laughs> that's, your, that's your weight. Yeah. We call it the Dave Rath in the business. Uh, he's very skinny. He's Dave very Rath. skinny. Yeah. But in my head, he's overweight. Yeah. He's like, he's big boned. Yeah. So every time I see him, I'm like, you just lost weight. But he hasn't in decades. Yeah. But um, I went to this vitamin guy. Gave me all these vitamins. Again, you can't, don't look up the vitamin guy. You can't get there. You, you got to use net worth minimums. There's just a lot. It's cutting edge, cutting yeah. edge. Yeah. And so he gave me all these vitamins and they gave me like a shot. Give yourself a, a shot this once a week with this. And take all these vitamins for this reason. Da, da, da. Now I'm so dumb that I don't ask what the shot is. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what the shot is. I mean, I may have I looked at what the name of it was, but I didn't recognize the name. This is what Barry Bond said about it. <laughs> <laughs> about steroids yeah go yeah. ahead so i so i never like you're just rubbing the cream on <laughs> and so i take the vitamins i'm really good about the vitamins but i like i'm always uncomfortable giving myself an injection because i literally just think i'm gonna have an air bubble and die like i just oh, have an yeah, irrational yeah, yeah. i'm gonna yeah. kill myself by accident yeah so so I, shot i was thinking like a but you're talking about a needle and a shot oh, no, in the butt yeah great so i i do it randomly like i'm not being good about it you know so over 20 weeks, maybe I did it six times or something like that. You're supposed to do it every day? You're supposed to do it once a week. Got it. So I don't really do it enough, right? So then we check the blood work. All looks good. Everything has gotten way better. And uh, then they give me slightly different vitamins and the shot. And then I go, what is this shot? And I think it it's <laughs> not Ozempic, but like basically Ozempic. And then I thought, this guy didn't even tell me he was giving me this drug. Like he never explained it to me. Like Just I'm giving like, you and this. And then this is part of it. Like we didn't even talk about what the shot was or that. And so I was just laughing. Like I, I was like almost tricked into taking. Yeah, you didn't it was involuntary. <laughs> that's funny so you got like it's like me too but with those yeah and it's always, got, it, I, but i always feel like i could take those and still gain weight i feel like i'm the person you that believe can pull that, that, off. that what you, you're capable of yeah yeah i can i can beat Ozempic. it's like the people who would beat the gastric bypass they would <laughs> pop the like chris exactly. christie kept popping the fucking stomach thing <laughs> yeah. multiple times apparently yeah what's your you like i think you just like snacking oh man i mean i feel like food as a self-medication reward shame eating like it's all it's all good what's your shame you know just binging knowing it's bad for me and then taking it too far and i've gotten so much better because like our house doesn't have a lot of junk in it that's the key you just can't have it yeah i can't have it but i you know i find ways to sneak but when i was a kid you know my mom would buy like chocodiles remember chocodiles it was like twinkies with chocolate on them and we liked them so much that the second they got in the house, I would like hide half of them. I would just open it up and hide half of my brother and sister so that I wouldn't not get enough of them. And when my parents got divorced, I used to like make myself hamburgers and grilled cheese sandwiches and eat Entenmann's cake with it. And like there was a lot of food happiness. Got it. Happening. And no one could, neither parent would say don't. Because they, they were vying for your attention. It was in one discussion of health. That we never, no my God, entire no childhood. health. Those are the rules. <laughs> like, there was never like eat that because it's healthy, don't eat that because it isn't healthy. Literally, no discussion of health. I didn't eat broccoli till 12th grade when it was in a Chinese food. I, I, so I never ate salad as a kid. The vegetables, generally corn or peas from a can. I just didn't even know what healthy food was. And then when I lived with Sandler when we were young comics, we love to eat we would talk about it all day like oh man we're gonna go to red lobster tonight and and even now we'll reminisce about meals oh god you remember that night we went went to that restaurant with that chinese food (laughs) what's great is everyone hearing this can hear sandler doing it (laughs) do you remember that place oh buddy oh buddy the beefsteak charlie's uh you know like yeah and so that was all 
also connected to being a bad athlete because I was the youngest kid in the grade. I just resented anyone who was accomplished with physical things. So it's, it's also a struggle to not be angry at the idea that I have to do anything for my health exercise food like it, it feels connected to somebody well, it, that tortured could, me what's the best shape you've ever been in the best shape i've ever been in was it's so funny uh someone asked me to do a movie but it required me to be kind of ripped and i said no because i'm like i'm not gonna get ripped how much how much time would that take and uh, so i can't eat anything the best shape i've ever been in i think maybe during covid I lost like 17 pounds and got healthy, probably out of just general health terror. And did you like it? I liked it, but not enough. I mean, you I just, like not as much as you like food. It's so hard to not eat like bread. Like it's so easy to not lose weight mm -hmm. because it, like you can eat great all day. And then at the end of the day, you just have like bread with your chicken and that day's killed. And, and that you, yeah and then you were like well this day's fucked i might as well have ice cream exactly where are the chocolate dials and i have a theory which i talked about in stand-up once but it is what, what i always think which is i think no matter how much you eat you can only gain one pound a day so once you let it go and by the way there's no science behind this mm -mm. i really feel like you can only gain one pound in a day so if you're gonna let it go really let it go oh right because it's you're already you already gained the pound yeah, and it's not going to be two pounds. For some reason, I've decided that's science. Great. It is not science, Great. but that's what I've, I've decided. Yeah, well, somebody, a buddy of mine made the observation, and I think he's right. If you drink tea with dessert, it melts the dessert. Really? In your stomach. <laughs> it doesn't at all. <laughs> but just the weird things that we all go like, you know yeah. what? I've intuited something yeah. that's entirely made up and pure nonsense. I mean, I always was a nerd. I still am a nerd. I was always physically very slight, you know, tiny, uh, very small shoulders, never liked how I looked, was always w physically weak. And a thing that you were aware of. Oh, yeah, it was devastating to me. It's one of the blocks on there, right. I think. It was devastating to me, and I fucking hated it, and I hated how I looked, and it took me a long time. You know, um... When I was a kid, I wouldn't go to like the store because I thought they wouldn't sell me stuff because I was so ugly. It just had like a real thing of it. It like was. Where do you get the idea that you were ugly? <sighs> I don't want to get into all that. Okay. You know, you, yeah. you you have people who like say something without knowing what they're saying or right. what, what they're causing. And I think one of the things that hurt was that up to the age of like five or six, I was objectively very cute. And then <sighs> shit turned. I um, never thought you weren't kind of cute. Okay. Just FYI. Well, thank you. I appreciate I that. I thought the I thought the eyebrow, the <laughs> uh, the like the uneven eyebrow thing. This, yeah. Yeah, was sure. like it's a natural <laughs> rock. But so I always I never never liked it, never liked how I looked. And then in my twenties did a lot of work to like be like, you know, it doesn't matter. Actually, you know, being good at something that you love gives you a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. And so when I started doing stand up, you know, right in college, so I was like 21 or 22, didn't have confidence until I started doing well on stage. And then suddenly everything changed. Like my whole life, the way I thought of myself, the way I carried myself, the way I talked to people, the way I talked to girls, it just changed, you know? Yeah. It all came from stand up. Being really good at something that I loved and wanted to be good at was awesome yeah it's so that sort of changed everything uh for me and then and then you know i started acting as nerds and all of this stuff and this industry it really puts you in a box it really is like this is what this person does this yeah. is what they play and after doing that for years i was like you know there's so much work that i don't have access to i feel like all they want me to do is play this kind of beta male and uh, you know and I, that was 10 years ago i did that special and that's how I presented myself. And right. Part of but, it was so that's what I'm saying. Like as much as it's their fault, it's partially like sure. you were. That's how you kind of thought of yourself. That's right? how I thought of myself, and that's how I thought I could get work, and that is how I got and, work. And stand up will will be a negative. It's a bit like you get laughs saying it, so then you're like, I guess this is who I am. 
You know what I mean? Like sort of. And that is how I felt. But, you know, I had that thing of that. I think someone like Conan has, you know, where all his jokes were about how he's beta, but he's not. No. Conan's alpha. Yeah. Sort of like that. So I really had that, like, you know, drive and motivation and ambition and all this stuff. My jokes on stage were about how I'm terrified of stuff. But in real in real life, I really was, you know, I wanted to be really good at it. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to like crush on stage. If I went on a show, I wanted to be funnier than everybody else. I wanted to bury my friends, you know. That's very fun to acknowledge. Yeah. And that and I love I always knew that about you. You did? And I always knew that about you. Yeah. So I always knew that about you. So I'd go to like this sort of communal yeah. meltdown thing. And I was like, no, this no, is for um, this is for keeps. Yeah. This is like there's definitely a competition here. Oh yeah. And it's not it's not that. it's not a commune. No. It's it wasn't a, for me. It was for some people. It was for right. a lot of people. And I know that some people didn't like that about me. That at the meltdown, which was such a great room and this communal space, that I was sort of like, I wanna do I wanna invite all these people to my show, all these really funny people, the funniest people in the country. Every famous, you know, comedian yeah. did that show. And on that night, I want to bury them. <laughs> I want to be funnier than them. That's the spirit of alternative comedy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Diet. Do you mean dieting or just general diet? Probably both, right? Yeah, just like the overall concept of, you know, eating healthy, I guess. You don't, you seem about right. The thing is that, Somebody you're and I feel this way about Roy Wood too. Like that's just the size you are. So I can't really notice kind that of that much. I mean, of but a, I've had my swings. You know what I mean? Like if you really look at a lot of my SNL years, there's been some some bloated years. You know what I mean? Where I was really going hard on soda and like not working out at all type thing, and just like going to work and then laying around until it's time to be used kind of thing, you know, like the literal whale. Shirtless? Um, yeah, super shirtless. Huh. <laughs> just for myself. Um, but even before that, it's it's been a lifelong kind of journey, you know, just genetically. I Is think. your family, like what size, what size do you think your body is supposed to be? I feel like I'm semi close now, but I could be more muscular. Like I could do more push ups and shit sure. like that to make it tighter. I got broad shoulders, you know what I mean? I, I don't think I was supposed to be like a very skinny person necessarily, yeah. but you know, it, it could be better maybe in the thighs. I don't know. I don't know I was where, gonna it's, say, where it's supposed to be. I was going to say thighs. Yeah, yeah that's thighs, what yeah. I had on my phone checking. Show me thighs. You know um, do you beat yourself up when you're overweight or when your thighs aren't right? No, I'm in full denial. You know what I mean? Like I look in the mirror and like, all right, this looks like, you know, symmetric or whatever, like a longer t-shirt, blah, blah, blah. Sure, cool. Sure. They don't turn to like the actual frontage. You just turn sideways and be like, oh, that looks kind of skinnyish. Then you turn side and you see how wide right. you are. You're like, no, no, that's not the person. No, no, no this is fucking yeah, that's the person that's I'm the wrong, to. Yeah. I'm talking to this person. This angle's yeah, not appropriate. Yeah, I'm good. So that part you know bothers me about that what's your inner monologue like you don't need that extra sandwich you know what i mean you don't need is it like, like bro is sleep. it friendly in the beginning when it gets out of hand it's like yo what are you doing bro you know what i'm saying like, yeah look at yourself like take all your clothes off and look at yourself and you think this is a good idea to just do chick-fil-a for the third day in a row type thing it's like you got to try harder you know like there's nothing wrong with chick-fil-a but Everything in moderation, blah, 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 bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as dieting concerns, dieting and exercise is kind of the only way to take care of your body. You can yeah, take this pill, you can do that. Well, now the shot. Yeah, you can use this equipment, whatever, but you just, you have to do them both. You got to do balance. something. Yeah. Do you worry about, like, you got, I have daughters now, I should be more, like, do you worry about that? I mean, yeah, but like at the in same the time, time, you know, no one knows the hour. And what the cause might be. I could fall off a cliff on some shit and been dieting and exercising the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So, you still but, doing that cliff parkour? Man, that hardcore <laughs> cliff shit, man. That hardcore you parkour. Come out, bro. You I would love come to come out. by. Like, man, Let me know. Time, man. Text it's, me, it's bro. All at night. I'll be right there. So we have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> all at night. Wow. It's all at night. So they just, you know, it's gotta be. shit. 
But I do want to set a, a, a good example for, you know, good living and stuff like that. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab-assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe. And then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high-pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.